Hi, my name is Sadi. Um, I guess it all started uh, many years ago during my time as a, an active heroin addict. Um, and through the system, you know, you go through prison when you're in it that long. I did it for 17 years. Uh, along the way, I met um, Adam Wilson, who's uh, one of the executive um, chairs of the YDHF. Um, and uh, one day he, uh, he said, I should apply for the position. There's a lived experience um, position going uh, to be a part of this committee that, that does such great work. And uh, now I'm a, a part of that and um, I can bring my lived experience uh, with me. Uh, without lived experience, it's hard really to have empathy with anyone that um, is in that. There's a lot of stigma and people getting judged you know, um, once a junkie, always a junkie, etc. Uh, all these phrases and, and, and ideas that aren't necessarily true. Um, and it, it holds people back uh, a lot. So uh, with heroin, um, you know, you fix one thing, but it destroys a thousand other things in your life. Um, and after a while, uh, you're fixated on just getting through to the next uh, dose. Otherwise you start feeling sick and you don't want to be sick for days. Um, and you end up uh, ultimately doing sort of petty crimes and, and shop thefts to keep that uh, medicinal use going. Um, personally, I never did it just to get high. I just wanted to feel normal, just to get on with the day. Um, and it, it's just, difficult when the the prices are so exorbitant um i mean just to have a, a small amount is 50 dollars, and you probably have to do that you know two or three times a day um um see it, it becomes like a a mistress uh, it, the the relationship between uh, a heroin addict and his substance or her substance it's just like having a partner you've got to maintain that relationship and keep it keep feeding it um because it seems like there's there's no way out when you're in it you want help um you have to wait for detox or you know when you're really motivated uh you know you get set back because there are two week waiting periods to see doctors etc um it's a long struggle you know along the way i've seen things that are not necessarily uh, being done the right way, like uh, the way police uh, talk to people or the way people are uh, given their medical attention once in custody um, and the distribution of, uh, say, Suboxone or Methadone in, within the prison system. Um, even as far as drug use uh, within prisons, I've worked uh, with Julia Madhu from, uh, from the age back then. Uh, she was the health editor and um, she, she could see as well as I could that there was a need for uh, sterile injecting equipment or access to uh, injecting equipment within the prison system because uh, there's a huge uh, rate of um, infection between prisoners using uh, shared syringes uh, to interview other prisoners and get their experiences. And I felt that it would be better if I was a prisoner rather than a worker coming in from the outside who they would trust a little less, I guess. I felt that, um, you know, because I had built some early rapport with some of them, uh, you know, word got around that my interviews were actually legit. So I had prisoners coming up to me and talking to me about all all kinds of um, stuff uh, with their experiences, uh, their drug use, what led them to uh, get into prisons. Usually, their drug use, uh, their, the crimes that they committed were uh, drug related crimes. Um, and then that some of these people continued to use intravenously uh, within within prison. You know, they're bored. What are they going to do? I guess so they. You know, I, I never did, but I've seen it being done, and it's not a, it's, it's pretty messy. Um, but quite a few of them uh, find a syringe, and they all share it, and that syringe lasts a while. And God knows how many people get infected, uh, people with HIV, with 
hip with other blood-borne uh, viruses and diseases. Uh, it's all just a cesspool. Um, well, there was talk about the Albert Macinocci Centre in Canberra, which is um, a new prison um, that they were going to trial um, an NSP within the prison, a needle and syringe program. And the last I heard of it was they were in talks and the talks seem to have um, fallen upon deaf ears. Uh, I haven't heard anything since. The, throughout the you know, uh, time as an addict, you get, you get to know all these services and all these people, uh, you know, housing services, uh, support services, workers, uh, other drug addicts, um, or other addicts who were new to the system, you know, to the to the underground, whatever you call it. Um, so, you know, that they need people in there to guide them, you know, people in the streets. So, you know, I think um, with the lived experience I have and many others in the situation I've been in, uh, prolonging the um, active addiction for, you know, 10 or plus years, um, you start to be able to, uh, reach out and, and help other people. Um, you don't want them necessarily suffering what, what you yourself uh, has been through. Uh, you know, the best thing obviously to do is stop and it's difficult to stop using, but there are programs out there now, for example, at North Richmond Community Health, um, there's, uh, it's called Buvidol, it's a once a month in, uh, injection. And I, I get that and it's um, basically buprenorphine that stays in your system, and that's basically done wonders for me. I, you know, I can I can have a life, um, and just live a normal life without having to think about the use of heroin, and uh, you know, that's been going well for over a couple of years now. Um, and I, I've led quite a few people towards that. Uh, so they call it you know, the miracle, the miracle injection. I guess um, I want to. I want to see the reduction of stigma and uh, the perceptions of the community upon drug users, maybe um, via the um, different sources of media, whether they be mainstream or uh, just to, to get out to, uh, more to these to the community members and um, get to know them and they get to know somebody who's uh, who's been through the um, obstacles that they probably judge judge people over. Uh, yeah, just, I, I guess, to bring about awareness that, that uh, there are people struggling out there and there's something that can be done.